Hey everybody, this is Sean Haynes with AgriCFO and the Ag Center. Another week of Commodity Ports. Hope you had a good, happy Father's Day weekend. Got lots of presents, lots of praise, because God knows we don't get it the rest of the week. Um, Going to jump right into the dairy markets here, which were really tough for guys this week. California dairy markets continue to take a slacking from the cheese inventories. Uh, May final price announced came in at 1760 per hundredweight, uh, which was about a dollar less almost than last month. Current June forecasts are running about 1605, so it's another dollar drop in milk prices received at the dairy on the standardized pricing formula. Most of that on the back of just continued cheese volumes made at very cheap value with excess milk in the Midwest, um, and that price being needed to clear it into world markets, which just seem to have an abundance of cheese at a cheaper price. So as long as that's there, milk prices look like they're going to be kind of depressed for a while. If you look at the current spread between cash market and the futures market, um, you know, 1494 for class three milk, uh, looks pretty daunting, but if you throw in the, f- the current cash market price for cheese into there, it's looking at 1357, um, for the same class three m- milk, uh, which to me leads to a lot more downward pressure on prices for the next three to four months, which is reflecting in the forward curve. It's, it's prices come off about a buck across the board. So on the bright side, dairy calves continue to be high because beef markets are doing well. You know, I'm seeing $500 to $450 um, crossbred dairy calves, $180 to $200 um, Holstein bull calves. Uh, feed prices continue to slope off a little bit as guys eat hand to mouth. You know, wheat and oat hay are down the 130 to 150 range on average. Um, forward contracts on corn silage being grown next year, 45 to $50, you know, coming off a little bit as well. Um, and then we're seeing some s- continued slope off on the almond hull side, which is putting pressure on the almond processors, which is another story altogether. But, um, so at least there's some relief coming as, as far as feed costs go and a little bit of money coming in on the beef side. But for the short period of time, we've got the window to look at, um, the next 120 days, we're looking at depressed prices and pretty severe losses for most of the dairy industry. Giving you an update on California beef markets. Beef markets continue to be strong. It seems like we've kind of hit that that upward level again where there's a lot of pressure back on prices in the 260 to 270 range. You know, prices came off about a nickel last week across the board, um, but still look good in the go forward basis. You're looking at 260 to 255 for four and a half weight crossbred cattle for the rest of the year. Um, and, you know, uh, same thing, about five cents off to about 230, 240 um, for heavier cattle in the seven to eight weight range um, for the rest of the year. Calves at the dairy up to 450, up to 500 dollars a head, depending on where you're getting bought at and how forward you are. Um, that's also pulling up bull calves on the Holstein side up to the 180 range. You know, probably going to be crossing 225, 250 pretty soon as they follow the uh, crossbreds up. There will be some tests, I think, on those calf side. Um, once you hit that five 550 range, it just you really has a hard time making profits at that range on the packer side. So packer. Profits have been kind of squeezed by, the, by that, and we'll see where, they, where they react. Is it going to push into the retail side, or is it going to push back down on the feed yard side? Uh, retail prices have looked pretty good. They've been up about another 10 cents this week to 343 for uh, box beef on the choice side and 310 for select. Um, so there's a continued push on the into the retail space for these expensive cattle move through the channel. If that continues to push up, that should be able to hold the cattle price up pretty high. But for the long range, you know, Prices look really good as long as these guys don't overpay for too long on the, on the calves going into the yard. Um, placements are down a little bit for the first time this year as far as 4% go. Um, I just There's no cattle to hit the yards, and as long as that's in play, you know we're going to have a two-year kind of span where you're trying to rebuild this herd. I think it's going to put some upward pressure on, on prices, so we'll see where that goes. Consumption t- trends tend to still be good. Uh, the only other thing that may hurt us a little bit in the go-forward is Canada kind of got their restrictions for going into Asia lifted on their beef exports, um, so they're going to have some more competition on the world market for U.S. beef, but data the supply constrictions it may not hurt us all that much. So that's continued fairy tale on the beef markets in California. Let's jump into nuts. Almonds, things to be kind of seem to be in stasis. Everybody's waiting to see what this subjective estimate um, turns into with the objective estimates due on July 12th. There's also a position report coming out on July 11th, so a lot of information coming out those two weeks. I think there's a lot of hope from the producer side that the objective estimate comes in lower than the subjective because at 2.5 million or 2.5 billion pounds, it's kind of sending a signal to either have flat to declining prices, um, given that the fact that it's adding to the carry-in from last year. You know, you have, in that case, you'd have a 3.2 billion pound crop between carry-in and current crop to sell off, which is pretty large. Um, we really need to clear some of that out to kind of get that almond price up on the world market, especially against uh, competing nations. So I think a lot of folks are kind of sitting, waiting to see what's going to happen there. Prices really haven't moved a whole lot. Um, growing conditions are still continue to be good, 
but I think there's just a lot of trepidation one way or the other where th that next report's going to come in, so we're going to have to see what happens there. Walnuts, guys, continue to losing um, profits on that side. The market's just saturated with the nuts. There may be some relief a little bit. I'm hearing between 15 and 19 cents in some cases, or 9 to 10 cents, depending on who you talk to, um, as Chili's kind of marketed their entire crop off, which is a competing walnut crop to us, um, but still looks like quite a bad situation for walnut growers for the next crop year as we've just got this glut of crop versus demand um, and still more crop coming on. So pistachio side, not going to talk about that as much this week. We've got the estimate coming out. Um, we'll have a, a film and report on it this Friday sometime and probably published on Monday, kind of given what the actual objective estimate from the field is on that crop, what prices are at, and then also um, where shipments are going as far as things in the pistachio industry are going. Again, pistachio industry is just a growing segment in the California market. Um, you know, it's kind of where almonds were a few years ago, where you've got a lot of nuts coming on, especially with these water restrictions, those trees seem to be doing better. Um, so we'll kind of see how the market's reacted to that uh, crop. So that's all I've got to say about nuts in California this week. Let's start talking about crops in California and begin with forage crops. Um, hay production, it tends to be still strong. Um, getting good yields off this year. A lot of these dairies are living hand to mouth as far as buying figos because of milk price. And that's putting some extra pressure on, you know, the perception of, of supply out in the market, which has pushed down these grain haze, um, oat, wheat, forage mixes. They've gone off down about 130 down on the low range, up to $180 a ton on the high range. Um, straws kind of followed that as well. Plenty of it available so far and the quality is good, and, but just not a lot of demand, a lot of people competing for uh, the crop out there, so people are trying to move it by you know getting the price down. Uh, alfalfa test alfalfa still remains high in the 375 range, 350 range, 400 range, depending on how much TDN's in there and, and protein, what have you. Um, but because the late season didn't get a lot of test hay off in the beginning, I have to wait for that next kind of test cut to come. Um, but regular alfalfa, as far as forage goes for dry cow hay and horses and what have you. Good availability, good quality. It's been pushing the prices down. You know, we had seen a high price for like horse hay at $24, $25 a bale on alfalfa last year. Now we're down to the $18 range already. Um, you're starting to see good quality to, to fair quality hay of $250, $280 per ton on the alfalfa side. So, you know, some relief there from dairy producers, um, some relief there for horse owners who <laughs> probably don't need it, but it's there. Uh, on the silage side, you know, wheat crop came in really good. It's kind of harvest was done. Uh, the prices there seem to be anywhere from $45 per ton on the low side up in the north side of the valley down to 75 down valley to about $75 a ton in the south valley with more demand for those crops due to water restrictions and flooding and what have you down there. Um, corn crop going in for silage this year for the 23, 24 or 23 crop for corn. Guys are talking anywhere from $45 to $55. Saw a few $60 contracts early in the year, but seems to be kind of coming back off to $45, $55 for pre-bought um, corn silage in the field. Uh, for these dairies, it's a little quite a bit off from last year when we were looking at 65 to 75, in some cases, $85 for the same corn. But again, guys living hand to mouth, and then also, you know, regular rolled corns come off as well, which you know, that market kind of falls on the on the corn silage side. So, I think you're gonna have a tough time getting much more for these forage crops, given that dairy is the largest buyer in the state of California right now. Um, and given their depressed prices this year and guys are just not building inventories. Um, and the, I think the biggest case for most growers is going to make sure they've got good credit quality on the backside for anybody buying your crop to make sure you get paid. And that's one thing I've been telling my clients to make sure they've done. So that's it for the hay and silage markets. Let's get into the more specialty crops here in California. Cherry harvest is kind of at the peak and sloping off a little bit. Quality was good. Quantity was good. Box prices from $25, $29, what I'm hearing. We'll get some finals on that. Um, California strawberry harvest continues to go on it's down about 20 to 30 percent from last year as far as volumes go we really don't know yet if that's because there's less acreage due to these floods or just the late season start on the crops we're kind of waiting to see how what happens but given the price rises and things like that i'm kind of contemplating that it may be some reduced acreage not just re you know a late timing issue on the crops prices for those on the flat side for a conventional about 10 bucks organics run about 13.50 it's up about a dollar to two dollars on each um, this week versus last so kind of fluctuating back and forth. Tomatoes, um, looks like just about everybody's planting tomatoes has got them in. Weather's been beautiful. Haven't had a lot of hot 
um, dry days yet, so it's given a lot of chance for these transplants to kind of get up and get vegetative and get out there and grow and not a lot of stress. So, you know, we got a great canopy coming. Hopefully we get some degree days, though, because we really need the degree days to kind of stress the plants out, get them to bloom, set some fruit and ripen up. Um, my major worry, again, like I keep saying, is, you know, it looks like most of the planting came into a much tighter window than it normally does in that crop, and it, that also tends to say that those are all going to ripen at the same time, and then the, you get this glut going into the processing plant, and then you get shoved back on timing, and you get quality issues in the fields. So that's going to be the major issue the guys are dealing with this year. Um, so we'll have to see how they handle that. Cotton came off a little bit, um, just extra moisture down south um, and lots of movement as far as foreign markets go. We're down about 81 cents per pound uh, for July versus 84 last week. We'll have to see where that goes, but it's some stress there. Um, and that's also going to affect uh, you know, cotton seed prices. We'll have to see um, you know, with reduced acreage what that's going to do for the, for the dairy side. Um, stone fruit really kind of hitting this year. It's about two to three weeks late. So we're hitting the plum season, hitting the nectarine season, hitting the uh, peach season. Um, uh, we'll hit now from like now to September. I'll start giving some prices on that as far as box prices and what quality issues are doing out there. Um, there's been some stress in the market though. We've seen one large kind of, um, processor handler go up for sale. Uh, just, there's no margins for them. Um, these late seasons really shrunk its market back. So we're getting some stress in that stone fruit side, um, from this weather as well. So we'll have to see how these long effects of the 2022, 2023 winter have, and especially with this new weather pattern coming in with El Nino, a lot of folks are talking about, which means another wet winter. Um, it could be a, a continued struggle for those guys as well. So, so that's it for commodities and crops this week. Let's talk rates. Treasuries continue to be inverted. Um, you know, the Close-up treasuries in the five range, long-term 30-year treasuries at 3.9. Um, that inversion's gotten steeper in the past couple of weeks, which means the short-term money um, is much more expensive than the long-term money, which is you know counterintuitive, right? If I lock my money up for a longer period of time, I usually ask for more money in return, where right now I get more money on my 30-day deposits as far as APR goes than my 30-year deposits or my 10-year deposits. Usually that signals a recession, so a lot of folks are th seeing that steepening curve. Um, telling us that there's a recession company, you know, unemployment rates are pushing up a little bit as well. Um, it's also cast some shadow and doubt on that jobs report that came out recently. So we'll have to see where that uh, where that goes. That's also caused the Fed to hold rates steady in the June meeting. So it really hasn't been much movement up in those rates as far as the mortgage markets go. Um, you know, conventional home mortgages up anywhere from six and three quarters to seven and three quarter range, depending on your credit rating. Jumbo mortgages down in the six and a half range, kind of floating, um, not really moving much up or down, waiting for the markets to um, come in. Same thing with uh, farm mortgage rates. You know, 30 year money is as high as 808 down to about 7.3%, floating 7.6%. So, you know, think about that right now. If I could, if I have a prepayable farm mortgage, um, I can lock my money up for 30 years cheaper than I can get a variable rate on that same loan right now, theoretically, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Which means the banks think there's much more risk in the short term rates than there are in the long term rates as far as moving up. Uh, I think a lot of folks think the rates are going to move up in the July meeting with the FOMC, about a quarter point to a half a point. Um, I follow this thing called the CME Rate Watch. You can go on there and look at it, and it basically takes a, a canvas of all the folks involved in making that decision between the board um, on the Federal Reserve and other banks. You know, it's been pretty correct over the years. I'd say 90% of the time predicts where the movement's going to go. They are reflecting a rate increase in July of a quarter point, and then things just kind of get even flat line after that um, and through 2024 before they actually even think about bringing rates back down again, which coincides with that inverted yield curve. Um, so in the long run, rates are here to stay. Maybe a slight movement more upward. Um, we'll have to see if there's any pushback in the market as far as a recession coming really hard and heavy that may make them pull that back. I haven't seen the stress you'd normally see in home mortgages um, that would reflect on home prices and same thing with farm rates on farm prices as far as ground goes, which is kind of perplexing to me and the market's just kind of at the stasis point. So there's a lot of risk there. I think in my mind, with people making less money, real disposable because of inflation, um, uh, coming on employment and these doubling of, and, and maybe even tripling of interest rates in some case, I don't see how people can buy a house, right, without the house price dropping down low enough to get that pay payment equal to where it needs to be for them to qualify on their income side. Same thing on the commodity side. You know, flat commodity side prices in a lot of cases, third year of maybe a slight crop loss to break even on the almond side, walnuts at a loss. Um, that, again, just don't translate to a high price for the real estate underneath it. So we'll have to see where things go. So that's it this week with the Commodity Report here at the Ag Center. Um, thanks for listening. If you want to hear more, 
please let us know what you want to hear more about. Um, we take all kinds of suggestions. Please subscribe to our newsletter. It's a small fee every month, but helps us offset the cost of doing this thing. Also lets us know that you love us. Um, and good information is worth paying for. Also follow us at the Ag Center here. Um, not just commentary reports, but also just good information and good affiliates and good services provided to farmers by farmers. Um, thanks again. Hope to hear you next week. Thanks. Thanks.